Hello, Professor Toybox here, and I'm back in my Fantasia toy box with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey after a nearly two-week vacation. <laughs> I know it's been a while, but I'm really glad I took that time. I needed the break. Before I begin today's lesson, I want to take a moment to update you on some changes that I'm making to my programming schedule, because I just can't continue to produce four videos a week. It's too much for me. And also, some of you have commented that you're having a hard time keeping up with all my videos at that pace, too. So starting next week, I'm going back to a three-video-a-week schedule, and I'll be releasing them on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Toy Box Tutorials will continue on Fridays as before, so there's no change here. That leaves Monday and Wednesday. Now, prior to my vacation, I had two other series going, Aladdin and Disneyland. I've only got six or maybe seven episodes of Aladdin left, and so I'm going to put my Disneyland series on hold temporarily and finish up Aladdin. We're so close to the end, I just want to wrap that up. And that means there will not be a Disneyland episode tomorrow. But in three weeks, once Aladdin is done, I'll resume my Disneyland series and finish up the Main Street USA toy box. So that's my plan for the next five weeks or so and I just wanted to make you aware of that. Okay, so back to today's episode. Last time, I set up a simple collection quest using the collectible tracker, and just to make it easy to demonstrate it, I placed two mushrooms over here. This isn't where I want these mushrooms to be, of course. I want to scatter them throughout the toy box, and there's a few different ways to do that. Um, first, one way is that I could place them directly into the toy box by selecting the mushroom from the gameplay toys drawer and just dropping them directly into the toy box as I did with these two. And there's nothing wrong with that, um, except that it makes the mushroom locations very predictable because they're always in the same place. Another way to do it is to use the random object spawner. And that's the topic for today's lesson. You can find this toy in the Creativa Toys drawer. And I'm going to place one up here on the wall just for experimenting. I've also dropped three buttons down here already that I'm going to use. So let's look at the properties for this toy first. So there's four properties. The first is the item to be generated. And by default, it's set to random. And if I select that, there's two different categories of objects that I can generate with this toy. Um, enemies or pickups, or, which are basically collectibles. Under enemies, I can select a random enemy, or I can pick uh, one specifically. And basically all of the enemies that are available with the enemy wave generator or the enemy generator are available here. So I can pick any or any of these that I want. The other is pickup, and under here are listed all of the collectibles, and I could have it do random ones from here as well. Um, for my little collection quest, I'm using mushrooms, so I'm going to scroll down until I find the mushroom collectible right there. And so that's the item I'm going to have this toy generate. The second parameter is the total objects to be generated. And you can set this to be anywhere from 1 to 200. 200 is a lot, and you're really going to bog down your toy box if you've got 200 enemies or 200 collectibles. So I definitely don't recommend going that high. Um, for right now, 10 is probably fine. I'll go ahead and drop this at 20 just to make sure we have lots of uh, collectibles. The next parameter is the maximum objects in a world at a time. So I've set this to be 20. If I leave this set at 10, then it's going to generate 10 collectibles. And as soon as I start picking up some of those collectibles, then it'll, gen it'll start generating the rest of the total objects. And it'll stop when it reaches 20. But it's only going to allow 10 at a time in the world. That's what this parameter is for. And you can set this to be as high as 20. And that kind of limits you a little bit. Um, keep the lag from growing. So only 20 enemies or 20 collectibles at a time will be placed in uh, your toy box world. 
so that it won't get bogged down. But again, you can go as high as 200. And then the last property is the generation interval. And this is the number of seconds between the objects that are going to be generated. And so by default, it's 10 seconds. And so for 20 objects at a time, you're going to have 10 seconds um, between each object. So it'll generate one object. 10 seconds later, it'll generate the next object. 10 seconds later, the next one. I can take this to be as low as zero, or I can take it up as high as 600, so 600 seconds, or 10 minutes basically, between each, <laughs> each object. And I'm going to leave this set at zero, so that all of the objects will spawn at the same time. And I'll go ahead and just place this, uh, yeah, let's leave that at 20. I'll take this up to 20. So we'll get all of our objects at the same time when I invoke this. Now there's some behaviors associated with this toy, as you might expect. And to demonstrate those, I'll hook up these buttons. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And we come over to the random object spawner. And I open the menu for that. There's three behaviors here for this. Uh, we can activate it. And what this will do is start the generation process. So this toy isn't going to do anything until you first activate it. And then once you do, it's going to start generating the objects you've selected, however many interval of seconds in between each object, um, up to the maximum number that you're allowing in the toy box at a time. And one thing to note is when you activate this, um, if you turn around and deactivate it, and then later come back and activate it again, this will remove any objects that were previously generated and start over. So activating it starts it from scratch. Deactivating will of course stop the generation process. Any objects that has been generated um, since it was activated will remain in the environment. So you won't lose anything by deactivating it. It just won't generate any more objects. And then the last one, of course, is remove all. This takes out all of the objects that were generated by this toy. So the first button here, we're going to do activate. The second one, when pressed, would deactivate. And then we'll use this one to remove the objects. Now the random object spawner also has some trigger signals. And there's five of them. So the first one is activated. This, of course, would be broadcast as soon as this toy is activated by the first button, in my case, over on the left. And then there's the deactivated trigger signal. This, of course, is broadcast when this toy is deactivated, which right now my middle button there is going to do. Complete is broadcast when all of the objects that you've requested are generated. So once all 20 objects that I've specified have been generated, then this trigger signal will be broadcast and it lets other toys know that this toy is done. Generated is broadcast each time a new object is generated. So whenever a mushroom appears in my toy box, because that's what I've set this toy to generate, um, every mushroom that gets generated, this trigger signal will be broadcast. So you can count the number of objects that have been generated. For example, if you hook this up to a counter. And then the last one is defeated. And to be honest, I could not get this trigger signal to work. It didn't seem to matter whether um, I picked up a collectible that this generated or I defeated an enemy that this generated. I could never get this trigger signal to fire. I think it's supposed to be broadcast when an enemy is defeated, but again, it doesn't appear to work. And so that's the random object spawner. So let's go ahead and press this first button to activate it. And because my generation interval is set at zero, all 20 objects should show up in the environment at the same time. Okay. And you'll notice there's some mushrooms out there. Now the first thing I want you to notice, because there's a couple of issues using this toy that you need to be aware of. First thing, if you look in the lower left corner, you'll notice none of the collectibles that I've spawned with this toy are showing up on the radar. Only the two that I have placed down there from the previous episode are showing up. 
And so one of the problems with this toy, and I think it's a bug, um, or maybe it's an oversight on the part of the developers is, is that the collectibles that this toy will generate don't work with the collectible tracker. And so that's a problem. Um, because I have no way of knowing when I pick these toys up. And another problem that you'll notice is that I can't select this toy at all. This mushroom that's been generated, I can't select it with spark mode. And if I come out here and equip the magic wand, it will not let me select that with the magic wand either. And so basically, I think the problem is, is that it's almost like that toy doesn't even exist. Um, from the standpoint of the editor, it doesn't recognize those. Again, the magic wand doesn't work. Spark mode doesn't work. Um, and so because that object doesn't seem to really exist, the collectible uh, tracker doesn't recognize it. And so I think that's a bug or an oversight. Of course, I can pick this up. And from a gameplay standpoint, it works, and that's fine. And you can see it stuck another one out over there. It also stuck one up on top of that wall. <laughs> and there's no way for Mickey to reach that one. And so that's another issue with this toy, is that it's going to put some objects in hard-to-reach or impossible-to-reach places. And unless you're using a flying character, or you have a vehicle in your uh, toy box that flying vehicle that the player can use to reach that. There's just no way to get to that. You can see here's some more of them up here on these walls. And there's another one down on top of that wall. That one I could reach, so that would be okay. But um, I've seen this toy place things kind of floating in midair, where there's just no hope of ever reaching it unless you have a character that has the super jump ability or something. See, there's another one up over on top of this wall, and uh, you kind of look around. That one's right on the edge. That one would probably be reachable. That one's over here on top of this tower. There's no way to get to that one. And so that kind of gives you an idea of some of the problems with this toy. And um, so for those reasons, I'm not going to use the random object spawner in my toy box. There's just no way <laughs> to do that. It's It had so much potential, but these bugs really limit its usefulness, and so I hardly ever use it. So I'll come over to the last button over here and press that, and that will remove all of the objects that this toy has spawned. But I wanted to cover it, even though I'm not going to use this toy, because this way at least you have a tutorial that teaches you how to use it. I wasn't able to find a tutorial on this toy when I searched for one, and so now you have one. Um, but anyway, for that, those reasons, again, I'm not going to use this toy in my toy box. So I'll go ahead and just take that out of here. Now, there's a third way, though, that you can place the collectibles in your toy box, and this would be another way to do it randomly. But um, you're going to have to come back next week to see what that is. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> this episode's already gone on long enough, I think. So in the meantime, I hope you found today's lesson helpful. And if you did, please give this video a like and leave a comment to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that. All you have to do is click my photo in the lower right corner of this video to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.